Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. Welcome to my first video of 2021. And let me say a very happy new year to you all. And if you're in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group, I'm looking forward to another year of bringing new projects, prompts, etc. If you're not in the group, I will leave a link to it below if you're interested in joining. So for January, our prompt is making a journal from junk and scraps. And the week one challenge is to make and decorate the cover. So I'll show you how I've approached this challenge. So I'm taking this box that Christmas cards came in. It's from a few years ago and it's been sitting in my junk pile to do something with it at some point. So you'll see it's a sort of box where the top fits on to the bottom. So what I'm going to basically do is to make a cover from this using both the top and the bottom, but I'll need to cut off bits from the sides. But you could use something like a cereal box or other food packaging or even a piece of cardboard that you can just fold a spine into. But I'm going to speed this up a bit because basically it's just cutting. So I'm just showing you where I'm going to cut off the ends and basically I'm just wanting to create the spine a front and a back. So lots of excess cardboard here to be cut off. But I'm not going to throw those away other than those tiny little bits that I know I won't be able to use for anything. I'm just going to cut any excess off and then I'll keep the bigger pieces for use in the coming weeks. And I'll cut the other piece of the box in the exact same way and you'll see how these will then fit together to form the front, the back and the spine. And this is going to give me a really nice sturdy spine. The journal I'm creating will be a no sew journal and the type of binding that it will have means that, you know, you want a fairly robust spine. So this is ideal. The cardboard was already kind of double folded here anyway and the fact I'm putting the two pieces together will make it even stronger. Now because it was a top and bottom box where one fitted into the other I'm just adjusting it slightly so that they both are the same size. Now what I want to do is to take a piece of sandpaper and I'm going to sand all over the areas that have the kind of pattern on it. It has a, a slight shine to it and I just want to knock that back so that when I come to stick some things down they're going to stick better than they would if I was just trying to adhere it to a glossy surface. I'm using a biodegradable wipe just to mop up the sandings and I really quite like that pattern there. Nice and grungy looking. So what I'm going to do now is I want to seal my cardboard. I've noticed when I've made journals in the past that if I glue directly onto cardboard, sometimes the cardboard absorbs the glue and it may mean that whatever I stick down doesn't stick quite as well. This isn't essential, it's just something I like to do. So all I'm doing is giving uh, each side a coat with PVA glue and this will just kind of seal it and it should mean that my next layer sticks better. My glue brush was a bit hard having sat for the last few weeks unused. So just getting a nice even coat there. I probably spent more time on that stage than I needed to. Doesn't matter though. I left it to dry a little while but finished it off with the heat tool and I'm doing the exact same to the other side, giving it a good coat. Now what I want to do is just to start to strengthen some of those fold pieces and I'm just using some masking tape and a bit more glue just to, to give a bit of added strength to those. Now that's done, I'm going to glue my two pieces of spine together and I'm using a very sticky glue here, just spreading it out with my finger, putting a generous coat on both sides of it just to make sure I can get it fully adhered. There will be some glue that comes out as I push the two together but that's okay. In this instance I'd rather have more, I'd rather have it coming out than uh, not enough because I really do want these to stick well together. 
putting a couple of clips on just to hold it in place for a little while. Now I want to fill that little notch so all I'm doing is taking my circle punch, I think it's a one inch circle punch and it's just going to fit that neatly because when I cover the inside of the journal I would have seen that that was kind of, uh, there was an indentation there so I just want to fill that, haven't bothered sanding these bits but just putting some glue on and then that will just fill up that little notch. Pushing it right in and again just making sure it's fully adhered. So I'm now going to use my masking tape again on the inside of the cover here. Again this is just about strengthening it to making sure that where the folds are it's probably a bit excessive. I probably don't need quite as much as this but I just want to make sure that this is going to be nice and sturdy. You could use washi tape, you could use a piece of paper to do this, anything at all. But as I say, it probably isn't even essential. This is just me doing kind of belt and braces and making sure I make this as sturdy and as robust as possible. Now because I've got a double thickness spine, there is a little bit of a kind of step up on uh, between the front and the back and, and the spine itself but that's okay I just make sure that I push that well in and again on the other side just adding that extra bit there just for a bit of comfort. So I'm going to leave that to fully dry and once it is dry here is some brown paper that came in some packaging some wrapping with something I got delivered during the holiday period and it's almost the ideal size and it's perforated so I'm not even going to have to to cut it so perfect. So again I'm just going to use a generous amount of glue. Now for this I'm going to have a little bit of an overhang to the sides and to the top and the bottom. That's what I want. If the paper had been a slightly different size I might have left a little bit extra on the sides but not essential. So a good layer of PVA glue on this. Once that's done I'm going to lift my cardboard structure and place it down there and I'm going to go over it a few times to make sure again that it's fully adhered. So I'm gluing what will be the, the front of the cover to the glued side of the brown paper and really working that down well. And I give it a very gentle fold at this point. Now there's different ways of doing this next stage. This is just the way I do it. So at the edge of the spine I'm cutting two lines up to the cardboard and then I'm going to take out tiny triangles. So just putting it in a little bit closer there. So I've put in my cut line and then just doing a little triangle either side of it. And this is just so when I fold it over it's not going to bulk up too much. Then I'm going to cut out a little kind of square at the edge. It can be folded in different ways. As I say this is just the way that I do it and I find I get good results. You can fold it in a way that it goes right over the corner but uh, we all have our own ways of doing it. Doing the exact same on the other side. So right along the spine folds on each side, cutting the little triangles and then the little squares or rectangles anyway at those edges. And what I'll do now is to put glue all the way around it and then I'll start to fold these in. So a generous amount, although not too excessive, all the way around, putting a little bit more on the cardboard. And of course I know that the cardboard is already sealed so it's not going to drink in this glue. It will just sit nicely on top. And then I just start to, to fold. It doesn't matter if you do the sides first, doing it this way it just all ends up pretty neat. 
Now I know there will likely be some wrinkles in my brown paper. I'm not concerned about that at all. It already had some wrinkles in it, so I'm perfectly fine with that. You can smooth them out. Sometimes they'll shrink back a little bit. You can see a bit of the pattern still on the cardboard underneath, but by the time I've finished, that won't be seen at all. So I'm now taking another sheet of this paper and basically I'm just going to make it fit the inside. I'm roughly going to do it edge to edge. It won't matter if it's perfect. And I'm just simply going to use my ruler to tear the paper along it. I'm not going to worry too much if there's little bits that stick up from it. I can sand them off at the end if needs be. It doesn't matter if it falls a little bit short on either end or top or bottom because there was that little lip of brown paper that covered it from the other side. So I know this is basically going to be fine. And then when I decorate it, uh, that would cover any little issues anyway. But all I need to do now, I've got it to the rough size. I'm going to put some glue on this, just that same PVA glue. Any excess, I just put it onto the cover. I'd put a very generous layer on there. And then I'm just going to turn that over and fit it to the inside. So there's a little couple of bits of rough there. I will sort them out at another point. And again, just using my bone folder to make sure that it is well adhered. I left that to dry for a while and now I'm just taking some clear gesso. I have decided I'm going to paint my cover, so I'm just really using the clear gesso as a foundation. I wasn't entirely sure what I was going to do. Uh, I didn't want to paint it white because I thought I quite liked the colour of the brown paper, but in the end I do cover it. But you'll see anyway, I put a generous layer of the gesso on both sides. Now I'm just taking tubs, etc. the end of the, the glue, I think, and I'm just making some circles. I'm just making a very simple design on here. So I'm going to skip through this very quickly because I'm basically just painting. I'll leave a list of the colours that I'm using below. I decided to use the Arteza metallic acrylics. I looked at or thought about different things to do for the cover and at the end of the day I thought I just want to use some paint and I want to do a painted cover. I'd thought about collage, you know, you could do a cover in any way, you could do collage, you could use more junk, you know, old envelopes, any painted papers, whatever. I just decided I would paint. So I'm just going to skip through this very quickly. I was just painting the circles in different colours where the circles cross over. I'll end up doing them just in silver. Now, I must admit, partway through doing this, I thought, why did I decide to do it this way? Because it took me ages. Just doing the background in a kind of gold, I think two different golds and a, a bronze. As I say, I'll list all the colours in the description box below. But there's my finished piece and I have to say I really liked it, but I liked it rather than loving it. For me, I needed to do something else and some of you might well be horrified at what I do next, but I just felt it needed it. So I'm taking some calligraphy ink in sepia and I'm just using a little pipette, taking some ink out, it's just a little amount and then I'm using just some bottled water, spraying it on and starting to move the ink about a bit. Now at this point I wasn't actually sure how it would sit on the metallics and if it would even grip it, but it does. So you see, just doing that, it looks as if I've wasted a lot in terms of the colour of the piece of kitchen towel, but I only used a very small amount of ink. Most of that was actually water. And, you know, 
played about with this for a while. I did like the cover as was, but it was just lacking something for me and this was how I decided to, to change it a bit. As I say, some might actually be horrified at the fact that I did this, but you've got to make things your own. So spraying and dabbing, and then I think I even take the heat tool, move it about a bit with the heat tool, and then I'll just dab off any excess and leave it to dry. And I have to say now, a few days later, I am really loving it. I've still got a little bit more to do on this, but I am really loving it now. So I didn't do the inside. I actually spent a few hours on this project. It did take me a while to paint it. I think I'm just going to make the inside one flat plain colour, but I'll see what I do next week. So this journal cover is measuring six inches by around five and three quarter inches and the spine is about two and a half inches deep. But obviously this style you could make in absolutely any size at all. You can just adapt it to what you have. Now I am going to now wrap some, it's elastic around it, but you could use twine, you could use embroidery floss, whatever. I think I'll probably be putting in six signatures. So I measure six lengths of the spine. I then add an extra one for luck and then I double that up. This may be more than I need, but that felt to me like a reasonable way to measure it. So just cutting it there, that was just an old spool that I dropped this round. So I'm now taking a piece, taking it from the length at the bottom and then starting to wrap it round. Trying to keep it in camera, but it was hard to keep it in camera and wrap at the same time. So I'm wrapping that round so that there will be six threads on the inside. I'm just pulling each end of the thread underneath all the others. And then all I'm going to do is put a simple knot and bow in the middle. Now I'm not double knotting this at this time because I may want to untie this and redo them depending on how many signatures I actually end up with. And it may be if you were making this style and you were using something like a twine rather than something with a little bit of give like elastic, it may just be that you need to loosen them a bit to put signatures in. But I'll be showing more about that in a future video. So that is the basic construction, but I now want to put a closure on it. And all I'm going to do is to push both sides together, punch through with the crocodile, and I'm going to put in an eyelet on each side. And what I'm using for the closure is two handles from an old gift bag. Again, I think the gift bag had been in my stash for a long time. I think I'd cut into the actual gift bag because if I remember rightly, I think I had butterflies on it. So I think I'd used that in collage in the past, but I'd kept the handles and these are going to be perfect for a closure for this journal. And you'll see that they pop easily through this. Now I might fix them in place, but I wanted to leave it loose just now. So on the inside, I might actually put a bit of glue to hold them in place, but I wanted to wait until I decorate the inside first. And that will tie together nicely like that. So I have other no so videos and I'm going to try and put them all in a playlist if you wanted to check out the other no so journals that I've made before. I'm using this little set of stamps just to punch a quote. As I was making this and as I was thinking about the painting that I was doing, I was just thinking about what could I put on the front here. So it's actually a quote from Rumi and I'll show you that a bit more in a moment. This was just a little Dovecraft set. I think it was only about a pound from Hobbycraft a few years ago. 
To be honest, it's not the best set, but it does for little things like this. And my other alphabet set is too big. I just take that piece of kitchen towel with the mopped up ink on it, just to darken the text a little bit, just to give it more of an aged look. And I think it will fit in better. And now just trimming it to size, taking out each word. Now I've got my words cut out, I'm just going to glue them in place. Once that's done, I'm going to take a white gel pen and just go over the letters, as you can see there, and just a black fine marker just to go around the edges of the words. So of course Nina will also have a video this week and I will leave the link to her video below and I'm very much looking forward to seeing what you all in the mixed media create. I want to see your journal covers this week. Finishing off with a sharpie paint marker, just a few little dots here and there which just help lift the cover. So like I said at the beginning, glad to be back with another year in the Mixed Media Emporium. Looking forward to all the different projects, prompts and challenges throughout the year. And looking forward to seeing what you in the Mixed Media Emporium also create. So if you enjoyed watching this video, I'd really appreciate you giving me the thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, I'd love to have you as one. And do leave me a comment. If you have any questions about any of the materials or any of the construction, anything like that at all, then do leave it in the comments below and I will answer it. I try and answer every comment. If I miss any, it's only because for some reason I'm not seeing it. So I do try and answer them all. Maybe not immediately, but I do always get round to it. So yeah, so please do leave me the thumbs up, as I say, and subscribe if you would like to. I'd love to have you come back and visit me again. So as always, thanks so much for watching. I wish you the very best of the year. Happy, happy 2021. So take care, everybody. Stay safe and see you next time. Bye for now.